Thank you very much. I, I haven't been to an RIU for a couple of years now, um, and it's great to be back. Uh, Meteoric share registry is still dominated by uh, retail holders, and it's great to be back amongst you all. Um, and I hope what I say today has some pertinence for you. I'm going to cover a bunch of things. Rare earths and what are they? The rare earth markets, they're, they're, they're struggling at the moment. A little bit of geology to help you make some investment decisions. Our project, our economics, right? And what you need to do about all those things. So let me jump into it. Yep. So we are, the information's the information, right? And the share price and those things, and you can look that up for yourself. What's important is that we are in the uh, very southwest of a state called Minas Gerais. Minas Gerais is Brazil's Western Australia. Okay, it's, and, and Minas Gerais is a Portuguese word that literally translates to general mines. That is what Minas Gerais means, general mines. It's the home of Vale, it's the home of some of the really big gold deposits. Okay, iron ore, gold, and, and more increasingly, increasingly uh, critical minerals. See, the Lithium Valley stuff, and, and now I would argue with our rare earth discovery at uh, Posh de Caldas. Um, which is right on the Sao Paulo uh, Minas border. It's important that you, I, rare earths are a very small percentage of the world mining industry and it's important that you know what they are and, and why they're important. They are a group of 17 different metals that sit outside the, peri the normal periodic table created by Mendeleev, right? So they sit outside that and they have they have these very similar electronic properties around their electron shell configuration, doesn't matter. Four of them make fantastic magnets. They are about 10 times stronger than iron ore magnets, iron magnets, ferrite. So for the same amount of magnetic power, you get 10 times weight advantage. And that's why they're used in high-end motors. Everything that you ever dry your hands with in the bathroom here, Dyson, all Dyson vacuums, you know, the high-end cars, the Porsches, whatever you want, rare earth magnets are, are the answer. And if we're going to electrify the planet, these four elements, praseodymium, neodymium, terbium and dysprosium, are the key. The praseodymium and neodymium are very magnetic. The terbium and dysprosium are used as additives to those magnetics to allow them to operate at higher temperatures. Because you might not realise, but you can cook your iron magnet and it'll never be a magnet again. But terbium and dysprosium, at RIP1, neodymium and praseodymium are much higher temperature anyway than iron magnets. But terbium and dysprosium allow them to be more high temperature again. So for defence applications or high temperature motors, they are the only answer. There is no alternative technology, right? Don't listen to what the bots might say about AI invented new magnets. That's rubbish, all right? There is, at the moment, there is no alternative to rare earth magnets for their power. But when you mine them, you get all 17, and they all have a different price. Lanthanum cerium worth nothing. These guys worth a bit. These guys worth a lot because of their scarcity. And each deposit has its own characteristics. What are they used for? You know what they're used for. I don't need to tell you this. Cars, wind, defence, everything. One of the big things that we see coming is robotics. Those robots that assemble cars and move extremely dexterously. That is all rare earth magnets. You can't get them to move that fast and that accurately without rare earth magnets. So we think that that's another boom. And if we're, again, the, the demand for these things, and these are demand forecasts, show that the world needs a lot more rare earths than we currently have. And, and this is one of the issues. Right? There, are, there are rare earth deposits around the world, but 67% of it's mined in China. Historically, they've been an enormous producer. In fact, the first rare earths were mined in the US at Mountain Pass. But all the technology was exported and offshored into China, and China took that and dominated and then developed a whole industry around it. So they only mined 67%, but, but they control the heavies, they control the terbium and the dysprosium, which is really important. And then they do all the downstream processing virtually. Now, China have a policy called China 2025. And that means in 2025, which isn't too far away, 
you won't be able to buy a rare earth magnet off them anymore. You'll have to buy a car. You'll have to buy a drivetrain, a fighter jet, a missile. I don't reckon they're selling too many fighter jets and missiles, but nevertheless. So, so the West is in trouble. And everyone in the Western governments in Europe and the US knows that. And we spend a lot of time speaking to those people about assistance while the equity markets are tough. Okay? So you can see China completely controlling the whole cycle. China also controlled the price of the rare earths. And the price got away from them in late 2022 and got up. Now, mostly when we talk about price, we talk about the price per kilo of NDPR, neodymium presidinium. So we're not talking about all the rare earths. They all have their own price. They all fluctuate. What we really talk about in price is NDPR. And you can see from this graph that, you know, it went nuts in 2022. And China came, the government came out and said, we're going to manage this. And man, they managed the shit out of it, right? Bam. <laughs> right down to here. No one, make, not even the Chinese companies make money at these prices. No one in the world. So the price has to rebound. That's our thesis. We, geniuses that we are, released our scoping study right at the bottom of the market. We were the only company in the rare earth space for many years to release a scoping study at spot price. No one else does. The companies that your government is giving $900 million to, to produce rare earths in the Northern Territory, they used a price of $120. To justify, the, to justify what they're doing. We use spot price in our scoping study. Do we make much money at spot price? Not really, but we do make some. We believe that we're the only rare earth project in the world that does, and I'll justify that in a minute as well. What's happening with the price lately? And this is the opportunity for you in this room today. Thanks very much to Vanessa Bullock from Macquarie who helped me produce this graph because I'm uh, Excel challenged. Right, that's where we released our pricing. And you can see, and if, if we put our share price up, you would see what's happened to our share price has a lot to do with happening the pricing. Okay, so we, we put our scope, scoping study out at a really tough time. What's happened in the last few weeks since then? 24% up, up again today. This is the opportunity. This is why you come to these conferences. Let me give you a little bit about rare earth geology now and the two different classes of rare earth projects. These are the traditional projects, Mountain Pass, rare earth, uh, Linus at Mount Weld. These occur in the rock. They, who cares how they occur, but they occur in the rock. But there's another variation of that and that is where you weather the rock and you develop clay on top of it. And these deposits are all over the world. There's a lot of them in Australia a lot of them down near Esperance, a lot of them up in Queensland, a lot of them in Brazil. We have an ex exceptionally thick clay profile in Brazil and we have some other amazing attributes that I'm going to go into. So I want you to remember these are called primary rare earth deposits. These are called secondary deposits. What we have done is taken the rare earths from these systems and we've distributed it throughout the, throughout the clay. I, I like this slide because I made it at the start of our exploration and we talk about 60 metres of clay. We've now drilled the clay down to 200 metres but it reminds me that I don't always know what I don't know, all right, and that this deposit is a lot better than I knew. So this is a comparison and I don't want to get there's a lot of words on this slide and I hate that but this is a comparison between the world's large primary deposits and some of the world's secondary deposits, okay? The only secondary deposit in the world that's currently mining outside of China and Myanmar is Cerro Verde in Brazil. It has a grade of 1,000 ppm. Hold your breath, right? These cost billions of dollars. These are full of radioactive material. These are not. These are cheaper if the metallurgy is right. So there's a lot going on there. Let's focus in on our project. You've just seen a slide similar to this from Axel. This circle here is the volcano that I showed you a minute ago. This is the inside of a volcano that formed 70 million years ago. We are only looking at the clay top. We know that there are primary mineralizations of rare earth here. They've been known about since the 1940s. We don't care. 
We are only looking at the clay. The clays are much lower grade than the primary. Why would you go and do that? Because instead of spending billions of dollars to build a plant, you can build a plant for a couple of hundred million dollars. And although the grade is lower, there's no radioactivity and the processing costs are so much lower. We will be the low cost producer on the planet once we're up and running. In two years, we've gone from zero resources to 740 million tonnes with another resource update to come. Okay, these outlines in yellow are where our resources are. And all the yellow dots that you can't see, because there's so many of them, are the drilling that we've done recently. Over 80,000 metres in a year. We bought our own drill rigs, something I promised myself I'd never ever do, and we, but we've been remarkably successful because the technology that we use is an Australian technology. It was not available in Brazil. I've got to hurry up. So, so an enormous resource. We plan to mine it 5 million tonnes a year. This is how many? 140 years of mine life? This is an enormous mine. So, we, so what that tells us is we have to build it bigger. But let's get the first stage done. Just a quick comparison about where we sit. All the rare earth, these are all second, these are all clay hosted. You can see they all sit about 1,000 ppm. Where do we sit in the caldera? And remember that Viridus is just a smaller version of us with less tenements, okay? Uh, or certainly less tenements in the critical caldera part. Um, we are the largest, we are the highest grade by two and a half times the average. Chinese deposits, Australian deposits, etc. But what about if we look at a higher cutoff? There we are. This is what we're going to mine. Four to five times the grade of everything else. Four times the grade of what the, the current mine in Brazil is. Everyone knows that grade is king. But when you couple it with the highest recovery of any ionic clay in the world, you know that you're onto something special. I've got to hurry up. This module is our number one uh, module. We're, we're looking at taking ore from three separate sources. Look at all that ground in between. Not a drill hole in it, one or two. We know that they're mineralised, okay? Capo de Mello is what I want to focus on. This is where the mine will start. You will see all the ore, this incredible high grade. I, as far as I know, people hit high grades and talk about 5,000, 6,000 ppm, but they're typically two or three metres wide. This is a kilometre by a kilometre and goes outside the lease. Who knows how far it goes to the south? We haven't drilled. And you can see here, and this is very vertically exaggerated, this is the top 10 metres, 15 metres. This is the key. There's no mining cost here. There's no drill and blast. It's clay. We just dig it up. We put it in a truck. We wash it. We get about 70% recoveries. It's unheard of. A whole bunch of stuff from the scoping study, and there's a bunch of numbers. Here are the key ones. I showed you a minute ago that the price got down to $50, but we will make a kilo of NDPR for $17. Virtually the lowest cost producer in the world based on our scoping study. Okay, amazing results. And we're going to make a roughly 3,000 tonnes of that stuff. So look at the margin, right? That's kilos. Times it by 3,000, then times that by another 3,000, you get a quick vision of what we might be making at whatever price you want. We're looking, we're looking at spending about $300 million to build the plant, so not the billions. I'm sorry, I've got a really rush. 300 million contingency, just because it's a scoping study. We believe that we will hold that number steady or maybe drop it a little bit as our studies progress. Low acidity, no radioactive, amazing recoveries, very simple and large scale. Hundreds of years of mine life. Don't believe me? Go and talk to some of Australia's biggest banks and researchers. In my... 35 years as a GO, I'm presenting to people like you, I've never had non-paid research before. Now I've got seven or eight. I actually left a couple off here and I'm very sorry, Petra. And who else did I leave off? Someone else. Um, so don't go and read the research. Every one of these companies says that our share price should be 40 cents. Let's talk a little bit about it, what the share price is and where the opportunity lies. I've talked about already the rebound in the rare earth pricing. And you can see up 24% in the last few weeks. You can see how the rare earth fall has affected our pricing. Now, there was, there's another issue there, and that is that people thought we were come raise. And we, did, we were. 
okay? But we've raised that money and now we've got $40 million in the bank. We're spending around $2 million a month, so we've got a good long lead time, okay? This is where we are now. And in fact, I believe, can I have a live price update? 9.3, so up, up from yesterday. Don't mess around. The cycle has started. You come here for a reason, you come here for a reason, and that is to find a stock to buy. Get on the phone now and buy it now, because these cycles in the rare earth can be extremely volatile, and that's why you came, right? Don't mess around. I'm presenting to you the holy trinity of geology, the biggest deposit with the highest grade with the best recovery. What else do you want? This is the opportunity that you came here for today. I look forward to seeing you on the register. Please come and join us. Thank you very much.